Now we're going to be working with a couple of commandlets that are available in the Posh SSH module. I have provided a link up at top so that you can download it. I've already set up a Linux server in my virtual lab so that we have something to upload and download files from. And I'll be running the command on a Windows 10 machine using the latest version of PowerShell. Now the first thing I want to do is store my credentials. That'll help with stopping the prompting of my credentials every time I run the command. I've already done that to save some time. So now let's log into the Linux server and then check the directories. So to do that, we're going to click on the split terminal icon, go ahead and split the terminal, and I'll SSH to the server. Now I'm using an IP address. It could be a server name. I just don't have a DNS server set up in my lab. So let's go ahead and log into that. I'll provide my password. You can see I'm logged in to the Linux server. Let's do a directory search. You see I have no directories listed there. Now I've got some test files. If you look on the left directory tree, I have a folder called SCP copy with two test files, test.txt and test1.txt. So let's upload the whole folder and the files within it. So the command that we're going to use is the set SCP folder and we want to pass it a computer name. I'm using the IP address because I don't have DNS set up in my lab. And then we'll pass the credentials. The local folder for here is the SCP copy. And then the remote folder that you want to move it to. So on the next server, we're going to be using from Windows. And I provided the verbose command so that we see what the command is doing. So let's go ahead and execute that line. You can see that we've got the files uploaded, and now let's check our directories. And we'll do a directory search on this. You see, we now have a new directory called from Windows. Let's go ahead and do another directory listing. And you see, we now have two files that have been copied. So now let's go ahead and download those same files and folders. The first thing I want to do is delete these two files from my Windows machine. And we'll go ahead and download the files from the Linux server. The command is very similar, but this time we're going to be using get scp folder. Again, we'll pass it the computer name or the IP address, the credentials, and the local folder that you want to copy it to, and then the remote folder where the files are sitting. And now let's go ahead and execute that command. You see this command actually failed. You know why? Look at the directory listing here between the, the first time I ran it, which was a capital W, and the second time I ran it, which was a lowercase w. Now, I must admit, I did that on purpose to demonstrate the fact that Linux is a case-sensitive file system. So let's go ahead and change this back up to a uppercase w, and we'll run the command again. And you can see on the directory tree on the left that the two files have been copied. Okay, so now that we've got the folders taken care of, let's upload and download a individual file. So let's go ahead and create a test file. And that's what I'm doing here is a, just a plain text file. I'm going to echo it into a, a text file.txt. And you should see it appear on the left directory tree. And it does. You see up here, this is the file I just created. So same as with the folders, we're going to be using the set SCP file which means we're going to be uploading it to the computer, which is the IP address of my Linux machine. Again, pass through credentials, and then the remote path where I want the files, and then the actual file, and then again, I'm using a verbose command so that we can see what the command is doing. Let's go ahead and hit execute the outline. Now, let's go over to my Linux machine and see if it copied the file. We'll do a directory listing. And you can see it did copy the file to my Linux machine. Now let's download it. We'll go ahead and delete this file from my Windows machine. And we'll go ahead and download it again from the Linux machine. Again, I want to remind you that Linux is a case sensitive file system. So you need to be sure you're spelling it not only correctly, but the case are the same across the systems. So again, it's get SCP file. The computer name, again, I'm using the IP address, passing the credentials, the remote file that I want to download from the Linux server, and the local file, which is the Windows 10 box that I'm downloading it to. 
Let's go ahead and execute that command. As you can see from the directory tree on the left, it did copy that file from the Linux machine. It's as simple as that. Thanks for watching.